us off at number 10 is Elms Hotel and Spa. Located in Missouri, some believe this hotel might just be the most haunted in the entire state. Originally built in 1888, just 10 years after its construction, the Elms Hotel was destroyed by a fire. It was a tragic event, but luckily no one lost their lives. But what's mysterious is that in 1910, the hotel went up in flames once more. Again, no one lost their lives, but this time, passersby noticed something. It appeared as though a spirit was walking around the embers, and rumors began circulating that somehow the mysterious entity had lit the flames. But just who exactly is this spooky arson demon, and why did they burn down the hotel? More importantly, if it was them, what made them stop? And it's not just fire maniac ghosts that haunt these halls. Another commonly seen apparition is that of a grieving woman who wanders the halls looking for her little one. But make no mistake, though she may be grieving, she is an angry entity. She'll pull at their hair or throw objects across the room while they are asleep to try and get your attention. Maybe she believes the guests are who took her little one from her, or maybe she is just angry to have visitors there. But either way, if I were you, I would not stay the night if you're looking for a peaceful sleep. Coming in at number 9, The Biltmore Hotel. Back in 1929, New York gangster Thomas Fatty Walsh was staying in the Everglades suite on the 13th floor of the Biltmore Hotel in Florida. Apparently, Fatty routinely stayed here and used the suite as a speakeasy and casino for him and his friends. However, after a heated argument over gambling debts, Fatty was shot by fellow mobster Edward Wilson and died right on the scene, and it appears he has never left. Once a player, still a player, the New York gangster is notorious for appearing only to women who he deems attractive and tricks them into visiting him on the 13th floor. One woman recounted her stay with her husband and said while in the elevator, all of a sudden, the doors opened on the 13th floor, despite that neither of them had requested that floor. They waited a moment and the doors wouldn't close, so the woman stepped out to see what was going on. As soon as she did, the doors slammed behind her on the elevator and it continued its journey to the lobby. The husband, worried for his wife, tried to reach the 13th 13th floor, but was unable. So he went back to their suite only to find his wife beside herself and outright spooked. She said when the doors shut behind her, she heard a maniacal laugh and the smell of cigar smoke. On top of Fatty's ghost, other entities are routinely seen walking through the walls, slamming doors, or watching you sleep. So it's a no for me. Coming in at number eight is Hawthorne Hotel. While this entire Salem hotel is said to be haunted by several different entities, the rooms you really need to be afraid of are 612 and 325. Room 612 and the sixth floor in general is where the apparition of a woman is often seen roaming the halls, who many believe is the ghost of Bridget Bishop, the first woman executed during the witch trials. Accused of bewitching five other women, she died in 1692 and remains haunting the property, seeking revenge for her life taken too soon. Those that stay in this room report a strong smell of apples, which most think has to do with the fact that she owned an apple orchard on the land where the hotel was built in 1925. But, but of course, it is her frightening apparition that stares at you while you sleep that is really unsettling. As for room 325, it's believed the entities that haunt this room may have been past guests. No one is quite sure why they are there, but these entities are definitely frightening. Guests report lights turning on and off with no explanation, as well as water faucets doing the same within the room. While lying on the bed, guests have reported experiencing an extreme level of cold, with many saying, with many reporting being grabbed or tugged at while trying to fall asleep. Plus, at night, it's said the screams and cries of the past guests can be heard echoing in the room. But what's strange is it never seems to occur anywhere else in the building. Coming in at number seven, Fort Gary Hotel. Built in 1903, since its doors open to the public, many famous figures have stayed overnight, including Queen Elizabeth II, King George VI, Louis Armstrong, even Liberace. But don't let the star-studded guest list ease your suspicions, this place is straight up frightening. Especially room 202, where it's said a woman took her own life by hanging in the closet. Those that have dared to stay in the haunted room claim they saw blood rip down the walls and that a terrifying woman wearing a cloak would appear out of nowhere, often hovering over the foot of the bed while you sleep at night. What's even scarier is that some say she will crawl into the bed with you and that you can feel her cold, ghostly frame wrap around you. But it's not just the room where you might run into the spooky ghoul. She's known to haunt the hotel lounge as well, where staff and guests alike claim to hear loud cries coming from the same corner. 
I mean, unless you're looking to literally cuddle up with a ghost, I would steer clear of this one. Coming in at number six, the Fairmont Hotel. While many of us know Banff for the gorgeous, picturesque Rocky Mountains, the famous Fairmont Hotel also has a dark secret. Room 873. As the story goes, years and years ago, an entire family was killed in this very room. After a long investigation, the room was refurbished and went back into the usual cycle. But soon the hotel staff were receiving many disturbances about the room that sent their blood running cold. Guests said they would fall asleep only to be awoken by screams and that when the lights turned off, bloody handprints would be found on the mirrors. Staff would rush to the room to investigate, but all seemed to have disappeared by the time they got there. Afraid of what lurked inside, the room was sealed shut and never to be entered again. And if you go there now, no trace of the room exists. There is only a long hallway where a door used to be, and if you knock along the wall, you'll hear a hollow noise where it's believed the room was once sealed up many years ago. But just because they've locked up this door doesn't mean the terrifying ghosts were trapped inside. It seems room 692 has taken over as the most haunted room in the joint, and the same kinds of frightening phenomena continue. And if that weren't enough, it's also reported the ghost of a bride is seen dancing in the ballroom. It said she tragically lost her life on her wedding day after tripping down the stairs, breaking her neck, and being set ablaze by nearby candles. Some guests claim to have witnessed her on fire walking through the halls, and who knows, she might just come and haunt you in room 692. Coming in at number 5, the Empress Hotel. Located in Victoria, British Columbia, the Empress Hotel is a decadent building known to be visited by some of the most elite of our society. But don't be fooled by its gorgeous exterior and extravagant decor. It just might be one of the most haunted hotels in all of Canada. There are many ghost stories told about this hotel, like the construction worker who was working during the 1960s and came across a shadowy figure hanging from the chandelier, only to discover a staff member had taken their life in that very room exactly one year prior. Guests also report an elderly woman in pajamas who'll knock at your door in the middle of the night asking for help finding her room, only to take you to the elevator and disappear right before your eyes. It's believed she was a ghost who haunted a room that has since been demolished due to the need for more elevators, hence her confusion and disappearance as soon as she steps foot into one. Others like the building's architect and a young girl haunt the building, but the most frightening spirit is the maid, Lizzie. Back in 1909, one year after the hotel's opening, Lizzie stepped out onto the hotel fire escape to say her rosary. As she did every night. But this time, unbeknownst to poor Lizzie, the contractor had disassembled the platform, and so Lizzie plummeted to her death from the sixth story. Guests who now stay anywhere on the sixth floor claim to have seen her walk through walls or hear her screams late at night, and believe she is out seeking revenge on the worker responsible for the end of her life. Coming in at number four, Tubac Golf Resort and Spa. It's one thing to witness the sight of a ghost, but in my opinion, it's a whole other terror to be physically grabbed or moved by one. According to one hotel worker back in 2010, they ended up having to work late, so instead of going home, he just decided to stay the night in the Otero Ranch House. The ranch house had long been associated with ghostly apparitions and frightening tales, but the staff member was exhausted and it was the only room available, so he figured he would take his chances. When he got in, he decided to lay down on the couch and watch some TV for a bit before heading to bed, when suddenly he felt it move. Move, and not just a little. According to the staff member, the entire couch lifted up off the floor and with him in it, jerked several feet towards the TV. He was immediately freaked out, but before he could get up off the couch, the curtains that hung across the room from him lifted up and came down with a swoosh on top of him. Needless to say, he immediately bolted from the room and did not dare spend the rest of the night. Although he still works at the resort, he has never again stepped foot in the Otero Ranch and will choose sleeping in his car over ever staying a minute in the haunted room. Coming in at number three, Hotel Provincial. Branded as one of the most haunted places in New Orleans, the Hotel Provincial is located in the infamously haunted French Quarter. Back in the day, there was a military hospital just down the street from the hotel, and one of the buildings used a medicinal herb garden for the hospital, which seems a little strange, but does make sense when you find out the kinds of spirits that haunt the halls. Today, the hotel consists of 
of five buildings, and although ghosts are known to lurk in each, the most haunted building is believed to be number five. Guests of building number five have reported seeing insane things, such as Confederate soldiers covered in blood, moaning from agonizing pain, who miraculously disappear once the lights turn on. Others have reported apparitions of surgeons in the halls, and maybe most disturbing is the amount of guests that have seen strange pools of blood appear on their bedding or the floor that disappeared just as fast as they came into view. One guest even reported that as the elevator door opened on the hotel's second floor, the hospital was entirely in view. So it seems as though the soldiers that died in the hospital down the street took a liking to the hotel and continued to haunt all the visitors who enter to this day. Coming in at number two, Ottawa Jail Hostel. As you probably already figured out from the name, once upon a time this building was a jail. It opened its doors to the public in 1862 and quickly became the site of many public executions. On top of that, living conditions were harsh with small, cold, and windowless cells that only had a small hole to allow for airflow. But things didn't start getting spooky until years later. After the building was converted into the hostel it is today, the parking lot was partially excavated to build a bridge, but to the construction construction workers horror, the remains of 140 bodies were uncovered on the ground, and it's believed that all 140 bodies were prisoners who lost their life to execution. The most famous inmate was Patrick James Wellen, a man who up until his last breath pleaded he was not guilty of his convicted crime. What's worse is that he was told his body would be transported back to Montreal after his execution, but this promise was not kept, and they laid him to rest on the prison grounds. Angry and out for revenge, many guests say they have seen him or even been the victim of his wrath during their stay. One guest in particular who made it very clear that she didn't even believe in ghosts prior to her stay said at 1 o'clock in the morning she was woken by someone grabbing her arm and trying to pull her out of the bed. Her friend who was across the room from her woke when the girl screamed, let me go, into the darkness and the two were both so frightened they couldn't fall back asleep. And last up in our number one spot, La Pavilion Hotel. Just minutes away from the notorious French Quarter lies the luxurious Pavilion Hotel. But despite its lavish exterior, it is believed to be the home to over a hundred spirits. And some paranormal investigators even believe the building sits on top of a portal to the other side. An interesting theory considering the building's less than ideal history. Although today the area is a tourist hotspot, Back in the 19th century, the ground where La Pavilion sits was deemed completely inhospitable and incredibly dangerous. It was the frequent spot for foul deeds and late night killings, which is likely why so many spirits reside in the hotel's four walls. Among the most talked about are a couple seen dressed in beautiful clothing roaming around with googly eyes. The couple will enter an elevator, but then it never goes anywhere. Instead, the usual ping sound rings loudly and the doors open up again, revealing no one inside. Many also claim to have witnessed a young woman on the ninth floor reported to have died on the stairs of the hotel, but the truly terrifying entity only reveals herself at night. One guest staying on the most notoriously haunted ninth floor said that in the middle of the night, he was woken by a woman dressed in all black, sitting at the foot of his bed. He was speechless and terrified and went to scream, but the entity leaned in, ran her icy cold fingers through his hair and said, you belong to me. I'll never let you go. Needless to say, he never returned, and I do not blame him. If I ever saw that lady in my room, I would be running as fast as I could. Number 10, Project Stargate. If you've watched Stranger Things, then this one probably sounds familiar to you. In the show, Eleven started off as an experiment to psychically spy on the Russians, and turns out, this was actually real. In the 1970s in California and later in Maryland, the CIA recruited numerous men and women who claimed they had ESP or extrasensory perception. People with ESP typically say that they can read minds or move objects without touching them. They were recruited to try and help uncover military and domestic intelligence secrets. Mostly they just wanted them to spy on the Russians by reading their minds. The government covered it up of course because why would they want want people knowing they're trying to use magic powers to win a war. But in 2017, when 12 million pages of records were declassified,
declassified, all of the information about the so-called Project Stargate became public knowledge. People learning that they had been using the men and women to locate hostages and even track fugitives throughout the states. Number 9. Vault 7 Vault 7 was definitely never meant to make it to the public eye, but unfortunately for the CIA, it got leaked. So what actually is Vault 7? Back in 2017, WikiLeaks started releasing a series of CIA documents. Vault 7 was a group of documents that contained hacking systems that were either developed or otherwise obtained by the CIA. For the most part, it should make you wary of your technology and how the government is using it. Many people know that apps will track our searches and data to learn about us and maybe even sell it to malicious companies, but it's much more than that. Weeping Angel has the ability to turn a Samsung television into a recording device, even if it appears that your television is switched off. Vault 7 also contained the ability to intercept all your iPhone messages before they got encrypted through apps like WhatsApp, Signal, and Telegram. And according to the documents, the CIA can allegedly take over your phone by exploiting vulnerabilities. But Apple has said that they patch these vulnerabilities as soon as they're aware of them. Number 8. Battalion 316 Intelligence Battalion 316 went through a few different names throughout its existence, but it was pretty much always functioning for the same reason. They were an army unit in Honduras that was responsible for carrying out political assassinations, and even kidnapping and causing pain to people who were seen as potential political competition throughout the 1980s. The group received both support and training from the CIA, even receiving their training at United States military bases. They were a military kill squad that definitely wasn't known for being friendly, committing various crimes like terrorism, misogyny, ethnic cleansing, and even so-called crimes against humanity. Their goal to remain in power in Honduras failed, leaving behind a long list of innocent victims. In 1996, members of the US Congress asked President Bill Clinton to release the documentation about the country's involvement with the human rights violations that took place in Honduras, and this is when we learned about the battalion. Number 7. MK Ultra. Let's once again return to the Red Scare and the United States fight against Russians and communism. During the Cold War, they came under the belief that the communists had invented a drug that would allow them to control human minds, and the US wanted a piece of that, starting their own research into the technique under the name Project MK Ultra, trying to find their own mind control substance that could be turned into a weapon. It ran from the 50s to the 60s and led to many unknowing or even unwilling subjects being given illicit substances. The experiments were apparently covertly funded in American universities and research facilities, but it turns out that the experiments also took place in prisons and detention centers in the US, Japan, Germany, and the Philippines. The goal was to destroy the current mind and replace it with something new. Attempts included using electric shocks and illicit substances. For some, the experiments were fatal, and many others had their lives completely changed. Number 6. Operation Operation Cyclone Operation Cyclone became known as one of the longest and most expensive covert operations taken on by the CIA, costing around $630 million per year for a whole decade. So what was Operation Cyclone and why was the government pouring so much cash into it? It was an operation that worked to arm and finance militant Islamic groups during the military intervention by the USSR. The goal was to aid anti-Soviet resistance outside of the United States. They gave loans, aircrafts, weapons, and other military assistance to the groups in Afghanistan, costing the United States government billions of dollars for these so-called care packages. Eventually, the Soviets were pushed out of Afghanistan, but conspiracy was still spinning. Many of the weapons ended up being sold in local markets instead of going to the rebels, and some people believe that Osama bin Laden and the Al-Qaeda received assistance from the US military. Number five. Operation Ajax In the 1950s, a coup took place in Iran, and the CIA documents about it weren't released until they were pressured to a total 64 years later. As it turns out, the agency played a large role in the coup that led to the end of the current Iranian Prime Minister, a rise in nationalism, and sour US-Iranian relationships remaining into the 21st century. The motivation was oil. The US and UK wanted Iran's oil, but their new Prime Minister 
minister made it inaccessible to them. So the two countries conspired to overthrow him and get the royal back. The coup seemed to fail and the CIA sent a message to their base in Iran calling it off. But the CIA officer who received it said nah we're not done here. So the next day with crowds allegedly hired by the CIA, the coup or Operation Ajax went through and the prime minister was overthrown. The monarchy and oil fields restored in the country. Anti-western sentiment also being restored and growing to new and extreme levels. Number 4. The Five Eyes Are you familiar with one of the farthest reaching intelligence and espionage agencies in the world? You are probably a part of it and don't even know it. It is the once secret Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. After World War II, the US and UK came together to create an information sharing alliance as a result of how important communication was for them during the war effort. And in 1956, Canada, Australia and New Zealand were added to this group. The classification status on these documents was USA, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, eyes only. And that was obviously a bit wordy, so they shortened it down to five eyes. It has been operating for 70 years now and is used for surveillance and sharing classified information between the five countries. The alliance was especially important during the Cold War when the countries shared a lot of information like the location of Soviet weapons in North America. The alliance was kept a secret until documents of the original UK and USA agreement were released back in 2010. Number 3. Operation PB Success Similarly to Operation Ajax, Operation PB Success was a covert CIA military operation that took place in another country, this time Guatemala. This was another coup that took place only a year after the one in Iran in 1954. At the time, Guatemala had a very new democracy, only being on their second democratically elected president. But the United States saw him as a threat, this being due to his allowance of the Guatemalan Communist Party to act freely and land reform movements that threatened US industries. The CIA then worked through various different plans of action to overthrow the Guatemalan government, including assassination and faking tensions between the country and Honduras. They spread false information, placed anonymous phone calls, and hired anti-communist students to create a fake opposition. Eventually, the president stepped down and their democracy was seen as unfavorable. The United States training that the Guatemalan military now had led to a war-lasting decades, tearing apart the country. But PB success was a success as it worked and they were able to deny CIA involvement until the documents were released in 1997. Number 2. The Secret War We're once again fighting communism, this time in Vietnam. But while the Vietnam War was taking place, a smaller secret war was taking place in Laos, attempting to stop communism from spreading to Southeast Asia. The Americans essentially used the countries of Laos and Cambodia Cambodia to fight their own war against northern Vietnam and communism, using their tribes as their soldiers. While it was clear that the small armies had no hopes of truly winning against northern Vietnam, the United States and the CIA continued on with their fight, devastating the country and peoples of Laos and Cambodia. They came out of the war with their land and lives completely lost and changed, but the CIA wrote it down in their history books as a success, disregarding the country's sacrifice. The CIA's historical retrospective on the situation not being released until many years later. Number 1. Operation Condor It's the Cold War again and the United States government are fighting against terrorism, this time under the code name Operation Condor. It was a campaign of political repression and so called state terror that was backed by the US and CIA. It involved many heinous activities like kidnapping, killings, political espionage and much more, all taking place throughout South America. America. The CIA chose to describe it as a cooperative effort by the intelligence slash security services of several South American countries to combat terrorism and subversion. But really it was a lot more than that. Condor's key members were Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia and later Brazil. The United States provided them with planning, coordination, technical support and military training all routed through the CIA. It led to many military dictatorships and new numerous deaths throughout South America. And there is so much detail and information on this one that if you want it, you're just going to have to look it up for
for yourself. Starting us off, in at number 10, we have the Alaska Triangle. The Alaska Triangle covers an area ranging from Juneau in the southeast to the northern Baro region, all the way over to Anchorage. This is an area that apparently craves souls, and more than 20,000 people have gone missing without a trace in this region. So, what's the explanation for this? Some people believe that a mythical creature is roaming in this area and he likes to feast on human flesh, while others believe that this area causes you to become confused and disoriented, so you're not able to find your way home. The most famous disappearance was back in October 1972 when an airplane that was carrying some pretty important political leaders suddenly disappeared. This led to one of the largest manhunts in Alaska's history. It lasted 39 days and it involved 400 aircrafts, 12 US Coast Guard vessels as well. But nothing was ever found. Even to this day, this remains as one of the biggest mysteries in Alaska. And you know what? Note to self. Never visit the Alaska Triangle, because it's just as scary as the Bermuda Triangle. Why is everything in triangles? The Char Man heats things up in at number 9. Char Man has a pretty gruesome backstory. This urban legend is about a father and a son who were both caught in a house fire, and they suffered from horrible burns in 1948. After the fire, the son became so mentally unstable, which caused him to stab and hang his father to death. When the police finally found the son, he was so burnt that they weren't even able to tell if if he was alive. So he was able to run away before they can arrest him for the brutal murder. Ever since that night, the chairman can still be seen wandering around the woods that surround Ojai. And that's located in California. Rumor has it that he will approach tents and torment campers. He will also attack anyone that goes in his way, and it's unclear on how many people he's actually killed. So be on the lookout if you are in Ojai, California for the chairman. Let's head over to the Beast of Bladenboro over in North Carolina, and this brings us in at number eight. This terrifying creature looks like a panther, but he is a bloodthirsty killer who lurks in the darkness, and that's because he's looking Looking for his next meal. He is known to attack dogs and even people, so watch your back if, um, yeah, we're not in North Carolina now, I don't have to worry here, but if you're in North Carolina, watch yourselves. People who have claimed to see this beast say that he's about three feet long, 20 inches high, and has a long tail with a cat's face. Others say that his scream sounds like a woman being stabbed with a knife. According to the local reports, animals in the area have died mysteriously, and all of their blood was drained from their bodies. Some of them were mutilated, and some of them were even found with broken bones or completely flattened. So is this just an urban legend, or does the beast of Blatantboro actually exist? I'm really hoping that he doesn't. Moving into number 7, we're talking about the Chubacabra. His name literally means a goat sucker, and I think this is a real thing. This creepy animal is said to roam through Mexico, southwest USA, and Puerto Rico. The Chubacabra is blamed for killing livestock and terrorizing people. They look like a hairless bear, and sometimes they can be seen with spikes on their backs. I just hope this guy doesn't get thirst for human blood, because if that was the case, we'd all be in a lot of trouble. I'd probably never leave my house, even though he's only an urban legend, I would still be afraid. I mean, just look at this thing. This is what nightmares are made of. The creepy clown statue scares us in at number six. Not everyone loves clowns. Actually, a lot of people are deathly terrified of them, and this urban legend is no exception. This the story actually originated from a chain letter that was being circulated in 2006, and the story goes like this. One night a couple went out to dinner and called the babysitter to watch their kid. When the babysitter arrived, the kids were already fast asleep in their beds, so she just hung out downstairs for a couple of hours until the parents called. She said that the kids are fine, but would it be alright if she put a blanket on a clown statue that was in the room because it made her nervous. The phone went silent for a moment and the mom replied with, we don't have a clown statue. Grab the kids and get out of there as fast as you can. And at the bottom of the chain letter, it says, if you don't repost this letter to 10 people within the next five minutes, the clown will be standing next to your bed at 3 a.m. And he's gonna be there with a knife. I mean, I've already passed this letter on to you guys, so now it's your turn to pass it on to 10 more people. Riverdale Road drives onto this list at number five. This creepy road is located near Thornton, Colorado, and it is full of horrifying urban legends. From a ghost 
those two attacks parked cars, crazy demons, and a phantom car, this road has it all. But probably the most terrifying story about Riverdale Road has to be about the gates of hell. If you're brave enough to drive along this road, you will see some pretty rusty gates, but legends has it that these gates are actually a portal to hell. It's no wonder why so much demonic activity is reported here. But the fun doesn't stop there. You'll also see a bloody handprint suddenly appear on road signs. You can see ghosts hanging from trees, and if you're unlucky, you might even see some shapeshifters who are out there to kill you. The dog boy barks onto this list at number four. This urban legend takes us all the way over to a small town in Arkansas. Apparently there is a 300 pound half man, half beast creature that has glowing red eyes who is known to bite at people's heels and chase them down the street. Sounds like someone needs to call the Humane Society. This urban legend originated from an even darker story. The dog boy was based off of a problem kid who used to enjoy torturing animals. Eventually he graduated from animals and he began to torture his own parents. Parents. He even locked them up in the basement where he can severely injure them on a daily basis. So that's how the dog boy urban legend came to be known. But this is actually a true story, which makes it a hundred percent worse. Diving in at number three, let's talk about Hell's Gate Bridge. A young couple was driving over this bridge, but they somehow managed to swerve their car off of the bridge. This happened during the nighttime, and they ended up drowning. So now there are two legends associated with Hell's Gate Bridge. The first one is if if you drive your car in the middle of the bridge and turn off the lights, the couple will magically appear in the back seat and leave a wet spot. And the second urban legend states that if you drive over the bridge and you look over your shoulder halfway across, you will see a portal to hell engulfed in flames. So make sure you guys don't put your car in reverse because you might not be making it out there alive. The Wendigo dropped onto our list at number two. Well, he's a terrifying creature who has an irresistible hunger for human flesh. This beast has to consume human flesh in order to survive the cold winters in North America. And no matter how much flesh they eat, they will always be hungry for more. They supposedly measure in at about 15 feet tall, have glowing eyes, yellowish skin that looks like it's decaying. Legend has it that the Wendigos used to be humans, but they are formed whenever humans consume the flesh of another human being. So if you don't want to become a Wendigo yourselves, then you should probably take human flesh off of your menu. I think we should name the Wendigo to Hannibal Lecter. It's just fitting. Cropsy terrifies us in at number one. If you live around Staten Island, then you probably recognize this name. Cropsy is rumored to be a homicidal lunatic who escaped from a mental institution. He apparently has a hook for a hand that he uses to hunt children and drag them back to an underground tunnel system. Parents used to tell their children that Cropsy is around the area, so they're better off staying close to home. Because for all they know, Cropsy could be anywhere and he could wait at any moment to claim his next victim. But then, they Things took a turn for the worse when Cropsy became more than an urban legend. Children around Staten Island actually started to disappear for real, and that's because there was an actual homicidal madman who really did hunt children. His name was Andre Rand, and Staten Island was never the same since. Number 10, Bohemian Grove. The only way you're getting to this super exclusive club is if you're a very powerful man. Bohemian Grove is a private club for the most powerful men in the US, located on a restricted 2700 acre camp campground on Bohemian Ave in Monte Rio, California. Every July, its members travel to the grounds for a two week retreat to relax and specifically not network. There is little known about what happens during the retreat. One thing powerful men are good at is keeping things hidden. The club's all male membership includes many artists, musicians, prominent business leaders, government officials, former presidents, and senior media executives. Members are also allowed to bring guests and even rent out the grounds for its off season private events. Sorry, if you're interested, has been sparked, good luck getting anywhere near Bohemian Grove. It's protected by security year round with the club employing ex-military personnel to secure the area. They also utilize high end equipment like thermal cameras and vibration sensing alarm systems. Some presidents that have visited are George Bush, Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan. Basically there's no chance of getting in unless you have some pretty important friends. Number 9 The Coca Cola Vault Coca Cola is one of the biggest brands in the world. The corporation was founded
around in 1892, so the recipe has been around for over 120 years. It definitely has undergone some tweaks since the 1800s, but now it doesn't contain illegal substances, so it really only changed for the better. The secret formula is located inside World of Coca Cola in Atlanta, Georgia. While you can absolutely visit the museum itself, showcasing the history of the company, the actual vault that holds the formula is off limits. The actual recipe is located inside of a metal box inside of a 6.6 .6 foot high vault, which is then further protected by a barrier, and the entire area has surveillance with armed guards. The door to the vault can only be opened by a keypad with a hand scanner. It sounds a bit extreme to take all these measures over the recipe for Coke, but with the company bringing in over $42 billion in 2022, the extra security makes total sense. I never thought about seeing the formula of Coke, but now that I know it's in a highly guarded fancy safe, I've never wanted to see something more. Number 8. Granite Mountain Records Vault The world's largest collection of genealogical records lives in a secure vault located quite literally in the mountains near Salt Lake City, Utah. The Granite Mountain Records Vault was built in 1965 by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. The purpose of the vault is to preserve and protect records of importance to the church, like its vast collection of family history microfilms. This is an extremely secure facility with no public access allowed. What we do know is that it's home to 2.4 million rolls of microfilm containing approximately 3.5 billion images of family history records. I guess when the Mormon church says they're a family centered faith, they aren't kidding. The church is collecting all all of these microfilmed images in order to digitize them and turn them into digital records available through FamilySearch.org. Some people think there is more going on in that facility than we're being told, with conspiracy theories and suspicious surrounding the whole operation. The vault is located under 700 feet of solid mountain stone, with three tunnels and four cross tunnels inside, spanning over 65,000 square feet. They also have reinforced entrance doors that weigh 14 tons each, and were said to be able to withstand a nuclear blast. These factors are what really led people to being skeptical of their operations because A, that's a lot of room for converting microfilms, B, that's a lot of security for the names of the deceased, and C, more recent images of the vault seem to show they've expanded the facility to now have five entrances instead of three. Some thoughts surrounding what else is stored there are significant artifacts, ancient relics, or even a bunker. Maybe the expansion is just for expanding operations, but who knows, maybe they really are hiding something else in that vault. At number 7, Area 51. The widely known name refers to that of a highly classified United States Air Force facility located in Nevada, which is highly prohibited to those without authorization. The fact that it's a government facility that is super off limits and highly guarded has led people to famously associate Area 51 with aliens. For decades now, the facility has been the eye of a conspiracy theory storm, with people convinced that aliens and their technology exist behind its walls. Being told you can't go somewhere or that something is a secret only makes you more interested to know about it. There have been many books, TV shows, and even plans online for massive raids trying to get a glimpse of what lies beyond the very prominent warning signs to no success. Upon looking at Area 51, it appears like the only protection against unwanted guests is the many warning signs, but apparently not a single thing goes unnoticed. Beyond the gates, cameras see every angle watching everything below. Locals say the base knows every desert tortoise and jackrabbit that hops the fence. No matter how interested you may be, only a select few have access to what goes on there, causing so many theories and speculations. Who knows, maybe it's alien experiments, maybe it's the most mundane, boring work we could ever imagine. Either way, we aren't going to be finding out anytime soon. Number 6. Cheyenne Mountain Complex It's located at Cheyenne Mountain Air Force Station, or CMAF, within the Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The CMAF falls under Air Force Base Command and hosts the activities of several tenant units. At the height of the Cold War, the idea of a hardened command center was thought of as a defense against long range Soviet bombers. The Army Corps of Engineers supervised the excavation of Cheyenne Mountain and the construction of an operational center. The facility became fully operational as the NORAD Combat Operations Center in early 1967. Since it's a big old place for government stuff, Cheyenne Mountain Complex is protected and closed to the public. It's located under 2,000 feet of granite with six tunnels, each three stories tall. It's also secured against and seismic activity and nuclear explosions. So basically, it's pretty high on the list of places I would like to be during a zombie apocalypse. It has two main blast doors, which are three and a half feet thick and weigh over 20 tons. These massive doors close in times of emergency and have only been shut once during 9 11. Since this complex is home,
home to so many important operations like a space control center and national warning facility, it's locked and guarded to the nines. That being said, since we know some of what's going on down there, it's far less desirable to visit. At number 5, Tillamook Rock Lighthouse. Located on the northern Oregon coast of the United States, also known as Terrible Tilly or just Tilly, this is one lighthouse that you can't visit. Tilly gained its nickname from the ferocious storms and difficulties facing the lighthouse keepers. Tillamook Rock rises nearly 100 feet from the sea and is located 20 miles south of the mouth of the Columbian River. Building the lighthouse in the first place was rough. The first person hired to take on the project was Master Mason and lighthouse builder John Trewavis. Unfortunately, John ended up being swept out to sea after falling off the rock before he could get far. After this incident, craftsmen were reluctant to work on the lighthouse, but construction foreman Charles Valentine stepped up with a crew of eight. Once on the rock, the men worked under horrible conditions. One day, the wind was so bad it swept away their supply house and left workers stranded for 16 days. After preparing the rock, the construction of Tilly took over 100 days to complete. Tillamook Rock Lighthouse began operations in January 1881. With a starting budget of just $50,000, Tilly cost closer to $125,000 in the end. Duty at Tillamook Rock meant isolation, horrible storms, and hazardous environment. On top of that, supplies sent to the rock were often delayed for days or even weeks. It was decommissioned in 1957 due to the extensive wear and tear. The lighthouse has bounced between a few private owners since shutting off its light. Even if you wanted to visit Tilly today, you'd have to resort to a helicopter because of the harsh waters. The rock is even off limits to its owners come time for the seabird nesting season. And number four, Dulce Base. Like Area 51, Dulce Base is the subject of conspiracy theories claiming that a jointly operated human and alien underground facility exists. Apparently, the facility lies under the Archuleta Mesa Mountain on the Colorado New Mexico border near the town of Dulce, New Mexico. On the surface, Dulce is just your average small town, so small it doesn't even have a single traffic light. According to the bizarre claims, the small town is just the tip of the iceberg. The alleged massive underground facility facility is said to be home to unimaginable experiments and technologies. For the extreme alien believers, we are all overlooking a high tech world full of aliens. According to the conspiracy theorists, the Dulce subterranean base is a 7 story compound that houses human animal hybrids, human alien hybrids, and extremely advanced technologies. It is possible that it's all made up, but if the government really was experimenting with aliens, it would make sense that they do it under a mountain near a very small town. One thing I find interesting about the Dulce base is that these theories are not new. First claims of the base's existence date all the way back to the 1930s. The rumors of alien intervention didn't start up until the 70s when a former state police trooper named Gabe Valdez documented unexplained cattle mutilations in the area. There have also been claims of UFO sightings and other paranormal activity in the area over the years. Secret aliens or not, it sounds like there's definitely something strange going on in Dulce that I don't want to look any further into. Number 3, Fort Knox. I bet you've heard at least once in your life someone make a reference to something being harder to get into than Fort Knox. And there's a reason for this. Fort Knox is a United States Army installation in Kentucky, south of Louisville. The reason it's so hard to get into Fort Knox is because of the Bullion Depository, a fortified vault located adjacent to the Fort Knox Army Post. It's operated by the United States Mint Police and it's super well known for its physical security. The depository was built back in 1936 and is operated by the United States Department of the Treasury. The excessive security is in place because it's home to over half the entire country's gold reserves. Early shipments of gold totaling almost 13,000 metric tons were escorted by combat cars to the depository. In the past, it's also been home to other precious items like the Constitution of the United States and the Declaration of Independence. Fort Knox is so heavily protected and secure that the vicinity is off limits to visitors. Even the president has limitations. In fact, only one president has ever been allowed entry and that was Franklin Roosevelt back in 1943. Along with the heavy duty physical barriers and fences, the government pays $5 million annually just for security. Number 2 North Brother Island This tiny island in New York City is located smack dab in the middle of the East River between the Bronx and Rikers Island. It was the site of the infamous Riverside Hospital for Quarantinable Diseases. If you've ever heard of Typhoid Mary, this is the place where she spent her final days and finally succumbed to her namesake illness in 1938. After World War II, the island was repurposed as housing for veterans and 
and their families. Then it transitioned to being a rehabilitation center for adolescent substance use, which ended up closing in the 60s amid allegations of fraud. After being home to many dark but important facilities, the entire North Brothers Island was closed permanently to the public and became a bird sanctuary. That being said, photographer Christopher Payne was able to go to the island in 2006 after being granted access by the New York City Department of Recreation. The photos he captured of the island are a little haunting, especially with its history of rehab centers and hospitals for the disease. These photos are interesting to see, but do not make me want to visit the abandoned island even if I could. The whole place looks like it's been taken over by, well, birds, and it's crazy that it's so close to the hustle and bustle of the city. Many people have stepped foot on the North Brother Island over the years, but now the only way to get a glimpse is through Payne's photos or if you have wings and a beak. And at number one, Nihau Island. This island has been privately owned for over a hundred years with only an estimated 170 residents. The invite only island sparked so much interest from travelers across the world due to its extreme exclusivity, commonly referred to as Hawaii's Forbidden Island. It is the westernmost main and seventh largest inhabited island in all of Hawaii. Nihau is also a crucial habitat for some endangered plant species. The island was purchased by Elizabeth St. Clair in 1864 for just $10,000, which would be the equivalent to about 170000 in 2021. St. Clair purchased it from the Kingdom of Hawaii, and the ownership has been passed down for generations currently belonging to her grandsons, the Robinson brothers. The island is off limits to all outsiders unless the brothers Bruce and Keith personally invite you for a visit. The people of Nihau are noted for their remarkable craftsmanship and mainly speak in Hawaiian. The reason they have kept the island off limits to the outside world is due to a promise made to a former Hawaiian king. The promise was to protect the island from the mainland and the rest of the world to maintain the beloved heritage, and that's exactly what they've done. To this day, Nihau has rejected the use of modern technologies and survives without electricity, running water, internet, doors, restaurants, paved roads, or cars. A modern day ancient civilization. It would be fascinating to see how they do things over on Nihau, but it's nice to know they've kept their promise for so long. Number 10. Racetrack Playa, Death Valley. This place is famous for its sailing stones, big rocks that move when no one's looking. Ooh, people know they have moved because they leave a track behind them, but no one has ever seen them move. Oh, mysterious. We should send in Scoob and the gang and figure out what's going on with this one. The winds in this area reach up to 90 miles per hour, so it could be the reason that the rocks are sailing across the ground. But my theory is gnomes that are living inside the rocks and move the rocks around like Flintstone cars so you don't see any footprints. Either way, I'm sure someone could crack the code on this mystery with a GoPro set up and a little bit of time lapse to debunk this whole gnome theory, but please don't because I want to believe gnomes live in rocks. Number 9. Mashashta, Redding, California Mount Shasta has been a major hub for all sorts of spiritual people, from Buddhist monks to white girls with dreadlocks who have crystals who call themselves bumbleweed. It's said to be one of the world's cosmic power spots. What does that mean? I have no idea. Do I look like someone who knows what a cosmic power spot is? I think it means if you hang out there for a long enough time you get some sort of superpowers or something. The Native Americans believe that it connects to the above spirit world, so I'm guessing it's some sort of heaven like spot. There's also been reports of UFO sightings and strange energy readings. Maybe it's a huge gas leak and everyone who goes there is just getting super high. Number 8. The Organ Vortex This one is crazy. It seems like some sort of supernatural anomaly or magnetic energy powerhouse. The Organ Vortex used to be used as a mining facility and now is home to some of the strangest happenings. Many people who enter immediately feel vertigo. There's videos of balls rolling uphill, sticks and brooms that stand on their own when left in places where they should fall over. The people around you will seem to shrink and grow before your very eyes. This sounds like one of those places where I would sit on the outer rim just looking in and eating a sandwich and yelling, hey, how's it going in there? A couple more fun facts about this anomaly is that local Native American tribes call it the forbidden place and animals refuse to enter it. Yeah, I think that settles it. Me and Toto are gonna chill on the outside enjoying some expensive cold cuts while you guys dive into the gates of hell. Number seven, the Georgia Guidestones. Nothing like a giant monument paid by a guy who wants to start a new religion. The Georgia Guidestones are in Elbert County, Georgia, and they're there not to guide you physically, but spiritually. 
They were thrown up in 1979 and paid for by RC Christian who there is still very little known about to this day. He wanted to erect a giant monument to people with 10 new commandments. New commandments with judo chop action. Some of these new commandments I could get behind. I mean there's nothing about how you shouldn't bang your neighbors wife, but maybe back in 1979 he didn't put it up there because it was just something that everyone knew you weren't supposed to do. But some of them are like balance personal rights and social duties, and avoid petty laws and useless officials. But the first commandment is maintain humanity under 500 million in order to have perpetual balance with nature. I'm sorry dude, but we already threw that one out the window. If all you need to start a new religion is some commandments, I'll kick off some right now, some commandments for the church of Che, like be chill, stay hot, put cheese on it, let's dance, take a nap, back clips are dope, free gym memberships, get wrecked, hit the beach, and Blade 2 was underrated. Number 6. The Coral Castle this one is absolutely bonkers. It's a giant castle made out of limestone that was apparently all built by one man. The castle was built between the years of 1923 and 1951 and is a few miles south of Miami. Some of the slabs that were used to build this mega house were said to have been even heavier than some of the cubes that put the pyramids together. The place was thrown together by a Latvian immigrant named Edward Leedskilini. This dude must have like a 9,000 pound deadlift. He could probably power clean a Jeep Wrangler. However, this Latvian powerhouse said he didn't move the stones by hand, but he had found the secrets to the pyramids. There are even reports of him levitating stones that no man could move. The craziest part about this is he built the castle as a tribute to his fiance who left them on his wedding day. I guess after a breakup, you have two options move on and start a new life, or never get over it and get superpowers. Number five. Skinwalker Ranch. I mean the name alone shows that you probably shouldn't go there. Like where do you want to go? Disneyland or Skinwalker Ranch? Yeah, I'm going to choose the one that sounds like it's named after the guy who would make cowboy boots out of campers. Well, Skinwalker Ranch is known for having a ton of supernatural things go down there. From alien sightings to strange lights appearing and disappearing out of nowhere. The place gets its name from a Native American myth of the skinwalkers, who are people who could transform into any animal. Native Americans have also said that the area is cursed with a dark energy. I honestly think I would be fine there. I think if a skinwalker tried to take my identity, I would just show him how many parking tickets I owe. Number 4. Sadava Sanctuary, Trout Lake Do you like aliens? Well you better head down to Sadava Sanctuary, as it's been a hotbed for UFO activity for nearly 50 years. If you want ET to come down and touch you with that weird little glowy finger then this is the place for you. It's literally a UFO retreat run by James Gilliland. Who is a UFO fanatic? He's founded two different operations dedicated to learning more about aliens and he's been letting people come up to check out the cool alien view since 1986. Almost everyone who goes up there has some sort of encounter with an alien. Whether it's strange lights flying through the sky or actual alien crafts in perfect sight or a soft kiss from a Klingon. Everyone who goes up comes home with some sort of story to tell. Number 3. Earthwork in Newark, Ohio It's super old, it used to be massive, and it's definitely a mystery. The Newark earthwork is very strange as many people don't even know what it was used for. Some people believe that ancient Native American tribes could have used it as burial sites or as a church. While some people think that the area was cleared out so they could better map out the stars. This spot is also super old. Some of the older parts are dating back as far as 100 BC. It was also massive. It stretched over 4 square miles. Sadly, encroaching development has destroyed most of it, but there are still a few major structures that stand. I guess if you want to look at the stars now in Newark, you're probably better off googling them. Number 2. Mel's Hole, Manashdash, Washington. I would hate to work at this place. All day, you would just hear the same dumb jokes over and over again. How big is Mel's Hole? How deep is Mel's Hole? How many people have come from Mel's Hole? How many people have been inside Mel's Hole? Has anyone ever got lost inside Mel's Hole? Are my hopes and dreams inside Mel's Hole? Well, all the hack jokes aside, this thing is pretty crazy. It's a 9 foot wide bottomless pit. People have tried to reach the bottom in all sorts of ways to no avail. It's even said that the hole has some sort of supernatural power, that if you were to throw a dead animal into it, that it would come back alive. 
There was one report from the 17th century of a family throwing their deceased dog into the pit and the dog later walked out of the forest completely rejuvenated. How am I just learning about this now? Someone dig up Harambe, we got a gorilla to save. Number one on the list is Champy. The Loch Ness Monster thought he was the only creepy dragon creature wandering around open water, but it looks like we've got our own that's made its home in Lake Champlain, which is situated in the French Canadian province of Quebec. That's right, North America has his own version of Loch Ness and he even speaks French, which means he's sexier. Champy got his name from the lake he makes his home in and like most creatures of his ilk, there is no hard evidence to support the creature's existence. However, there have been several sightings, over 300 actually. That's more sightings than the rest of NSYNC since Justin Timberlake left. The Iroquois and Abenaki are two Native American tribes from the area and they both have legends of some sort of snake like creature living in the lake. I'm going to have to go out on a limb and say Champy is real. 10 is the Lake Michigan Monster. I don't know why a giant monster would want to make its home in Lake Michigan when there's a whole ocean out there. Maybe he's trapped and he looks out into the open area and sings a whole new world like Ariel from A Little Mermaid. Oh. So heart touching. I bet if you dig hard enough, you can find a failed drama teacher who has written a musical about the Lake Michigan monster with that exact scene in it. Anyways, this being an old lake creature, there have been sightings that date back to 1817, and it has been nicknamed the Sea Panther because it apparently has a cat like head. People who say they have seen it say it looks like a cross between some sort of giant sea snake and a jungle cat. Maybe it's one of God's bad creations that just got dumped in this lake. Like when I quit halfway through a joke because I can't think of a punchline like right now at the end of this one. Number nine, Ringing Rocks Park. This park is tucked away in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and it is home to some of nature's strangest anomalies. The Ringing Rocks Park houses a bunch of boulders that ring like bells if you hit them. You could do a full live show like the Blue Man Group just smashing on these bad boys. You could just get together a bunch of rocks and then charge $200 a ticket for people to come see you. People don't really know why the rocks make this ringing noise. They're all made of the same material, some sort of volcanic substance. I'm not smart enough to understand why that makes sense. I think these things just exploded out of a volcano and smashed all over the hillside, but I'm really basing that off of a short clip I watched about the park. The weird part about the ringing rocks in this area is that not all of them make the ringing noise. Only a third of the rocks in the area will make the tune that makes your body groove. It's like some of them are the chosen ones and the rest of them are just plebs that have to live around the cool, awesome rocks. God, it would suck to be one of those plain, old, lame, dinky rocks instead of a sick singing rock. Huh? Not all of us are blessed. Number eight, the screaming tunnel and the blue ghost tunnel. The screaming tunnel sounds like when you rip a hot chili fart so powerful it wakes up the person who made a grave mistake of sleeping next to you. Well, unfortunately, these two places are not hideouts for stinky trumpet sounding farts coming out of your brown log cave. There are actually two haunted tunnels in the Niagara region in Ontario, Canada. It's said that if you stand in the screaming tunnel and light a match, you can hear a bunch of people screaming. Cold spells, whispers, and even Strange ghostly figures have been seen hanging around this creepy tube. The blue ghost tunnel used to be a hotbed for supernatural activity, but has been sealed due to the poor condition of the tunnel. I bet the ghost just wanted to be left alone, so they started destroying everything. It's like when you get into a fight with your girlfriend, so she'll leave you alone for the whole day, so you can run through God of War on PS4 another time, just rip through it and have like a sick time without getting bothered. Yeah, you guys get it. Anyways, number seven, Winchester Mystery Home. I would definitely have a giant over the top extravagant mansion if I was rich. I just like to be extra like that. That's pretty much what the Winchester Mystery Home is. It was built by Sarah Winchester who was connected to the world famous Winchester rifle. I think I used that gun to murk a bunch of O'Driscolls in Red Dead Redemption 2. She was stupid rich and after her husband and son both died, she decided to spend her time on her loving house. I mean, I get that. Having all the people that you love around you die, that would push you to love some inanimate object. That could be why there's so many weird people People on TLC. But Julius's obsession with balloons goes beyond shapes and colors. My love for balloons, it's also a sexual love. Well, she started spending all of her money turning the Winchester home into one of the most bawling places of all time. She would constantly have new rooms installed and old rooms remodeled. It's suspected that there were over 500 constructed or remodeled rooms. She could have had two 
two episodes on MTV Cribs every season. Number six, Magnetic Hill, New Brunswick, Canada. If you end up in New Brunswick, you really want to spend all your time eating lobster and trying to upset the French population with how badly you speak French in a province that speaks French. People really get pissed when you go to their city and you don't know the language at all. But if you manage to work your way through the hordes of angry French people and stop eating lobster smothered in butter before you give yourself gout, then you might want to check out the Magnetic Hill. It's been given this nickname because if you leave your car at the bottom of the hill in neutral, it might start rolling uphill. How does this happen? Well, a lot of people think it might be some sort of large magnetic deposit underneath the ground that's pushing everything around. Well, I really have no idea how this happens or even how magnets work, so I'm not the guy to talk to about this. I would just ask every French person you meet until one of them gives you the answer. Don't Google it. What I told you to do is way more fun. Number five, underwater Stonehenge. What makes a place like Stonehenge even cooler? Well, if you put it underwater. Also, if we could put on a giant block party where there's like aliens from Area 51, like you could have this huge event and sell tickets for like 800 bucks and invite famous people and then all of us do backflips off the stones, that would also make it cooler. But underwater Stonehenge is still very cool. It's at the bottom of Lake Michigan and probably hanging out with that cat faced water monster. People speculate that the rocks were placed there before the ice age. If that's the case, the rocks could be over 10,000 years old. Either that or someone just got bored and started to chuck a bunch of rocks into the lake and they all fell in a pretty formation. Or like all these things, aliens made it. How come every time some weird stuff happens, people think it's aliens? Maybe before people had YouTube, they were just bored all the time and they do things like place rocks in circles and call it a day. If YouTube existed thousands of years ago, we probably wouldn't have Pyramid State. There would just be a bunch of fan drawings of PewDiePie. Number four, Eternal Flame Falls, Orchard Park, New York. There's nothing more normal than a fire that never goes out. That's what we all know about fire, is that it burns in a never ending fashion and consumes the whole world. Well, that's how the Eternal Flame will make you feel. It's a methane leak right under a waterfall. So right where you see this massive arc of water, you'll see this strange orange glow. Sometimes the wind or water will put out the flame, but you can get it going with just a spark of your lighter. That's a big hell no for me. I would want to be as far away as possible from that thing when someone lights it on fire. I wouldn't want to be blown to smithereens by some methane leak that I lit on fire on purpose. That's like the dumbest way you could ever die. I would prefer to get eaten by a bear while running around naked covered in honey. At least the second one's a funnier option. Number three, Roanoke Island, North Carolina. So you're hanging out with all your buddies and then out of nowhere, everyone's gone. Like everyone's gone. Not just the people you're hanging out with, but in an entire colony of people. I'm not describing some Netflix show, but what actually happened on this island in North Carolina. An entire colony of people just disappeared and no one knows where they went. It's like when you take a poop and you go to wipe, but there's no poop on the toilet paper. And then you look in the toilet and there's no poop in the toilet. And you're like, did I even poop? Am I in a bathroom? Is this a simulation? There's a glitch in the matrix. Some people speculate that the people that were living there did their lives and decided to live with the local Native American tribes as they had way better fashion sense and would hit the peace pipe all the time. I kind of get why someone would do something like that. It's just like when someone buys a spontaneous plane ticket and then moves to Thailand and doesn't come home for three years. And then when they come home, they only wear flowy pants and have a septum piercing. Number two, Roswell, New Mexico. For those of you that think the storming Area 51 meme started with Harambe, you're so wrong. It started here baby. Back in 1947, a UFO crashed in Roswell, New Mexico, and that's when everyone started asking, what if there's some aliens running around the universe? The American government said that it wasn't a UFO, but it was a weather balloon, which is the lamest cover-up answer ever. That's like my dog ate my homework of alien cover-ups. We all know the truth, and we're going to have proof on September 20th when we all storm Area 51 and get sick alien clothes. Number one on the list, Energy Vortex. Sedona, Arizona. What do you want to get from a vacation? Some rest, relaxation, so you can feel rejuvenated. Well, apparently you can get that if you go visit an energy vortex in Sedona, Arizona. There's said to be pockets of supernatural energy that will give you a personal boost. This is like Superman flying into the sun. Why spend hundreds of dollars on a spa package when you can just drive in your 1997 Toyota Corolla to a spot and get juiced up by magical energy? Way better and way cheaper.